Welcome to the April uh, installment of Parenting Hacks. And we are really pleased today to have a local author who lives in the San Diego area. Her name is Sally Plot, and I'm gonna have her go ahead and take it away. <laughs> thank you, Maura, and thank you so much for having me here. I'm really honored and super happy to talk to you guys tonight because this is something that really, it's a subject that really um, matters to me so much. It's just what I'm passionate about, and I hope to share a little bit about that with you today. Um, I'm My name is Sally Pla. Um, I'm a children's author. I've written several children's novels and a picture book. Um, I'm also autistic, diagnosed as an adult. And um, as I'm talking to you, I am desperately moving my little fidget toy, which I cannot get through a Zoom thing without. A friend of mine actually carved it for me. It's like this little wooden four-leaf clover. And um, so I have to sort of use that a little bit. And if I rock a little bit, I hope you don't mind. It's just I get kind of antsy sometimes, but I'll try to contain my enthusiasm for this really cool topic that we're going to talk about, which is helping kids and helping kids heal and learn more about themselves and understand themselves more through literature, through fiction, through, through books. And there are amazing picture books, middle grade books, and young adult books coming out these days that take a completely different and very fresh approach towards representing neurodiversity and disability in general. Um, and it's just such a, such a more open, honest, truthful, and supportive stance that I wanted to spotlight some of those books for you today. Um, what else can I tell you? I, you know, I, I started a website a number of years ago called anovelmind.com. That's how strongly I kind of feel about this, along with a friend of mine who, who's a therapist and uh, who treats kids with ADHD. She noticed, too, that there were a lot of new books coming up that did such a better job at representation. And we both very much disliked the older books that had been on the shelves, books that would do things like, say, here's my brother, Johnny. You know, he has autism. Here are his symptoms or the strange things that he does, but don't mind them. We all have to accept each other. And so say you're an autistic kid at school and you go to the school library and that's the only book that you see about yourself as an autistic kid in the school. Um, that's such an othering experience and, you know, so many books had been written in the past, basically from like a sibling point of view or using the child with a disability as uh, a, a means for the other kids growth, you know, and never really centering the child with a disability or the child, you know, the autistic or the ADHD, the neurodivergent child. And we really felt that was wrong and, and wanted to spotlight and highlight the books we thought that did it right. So we created a website called anovelmind.com. And there's a database on there with more than a thousand books listed where you can search by a mental health issue or um, a neurodiversity issue. Um, you can search by age group, all kind of search parameters where you can find books that might be a good match for the child you have in mind. Um, there's also a weekly blog. We have guest writers uh, writing every Wednesday. There's a new, uh, during the school year, year season, there's a new uh, guest blog. Um, so it's really been a great thing to put together. We also have a whole bunch of resource pages where um, Adriana White, who is a children's, an autistic children's librarian from Texas, has put together the most amazing resources. Um, so you can go through there and find all kinds of things. So I, I hope that's something that might be of use um, to families and to teachers and librarians. Uh, anyway, so that's, I guess, a little bit about that. Um, my own books, maybe, I, you know, I have, I'm sitting here surrounded by stacks of books and I wanna share some of them with you um, and really make that the, the crux of what we talk about. But I, I also wanna make the case too for why stories matter so much to kids. Um, it helps their resilience. It helps their self-esteem. Um, stories and discussing stories is, is just a way into talking about 
difficult problems that it's, it's so hard to confide sometimes. It's so hard to confess and say, I'm feeling vulnerable, I'm feeling bad, my feelings are hurt, I have a bully problem. But if that's happening in a book that you're reading and you're able to discuss it with the adults or the teachers and people that care about you um, and even discuss it with other kids, you know, in class or at home with your family. And if you're talking about the character, why do you think the character did that or why do you think that happened in the story? Um, it takes away that sense of, you know, it, it's a way in to be able to talk about these things. And it, it's something called bibliotherapy, using books. Um, for therapy a little bit to help. Um, there's a researcher called Rudine Sims Bishop, and she came out with a great uh, way of thinking about it um, in terms of stories for kids and books for kids being, giving them windows, mirrors, and doors. That windows, as a, books can be a window, a way to look in, through and see a different world. They can be mirrors where they reflect a child back to themselves, and you learn some self-discovery that way. And they can be doors because they can open doors for you and take you into different lands of imagination and allow you to imagine different ways of being that you may not have thought possible. So um, those are all just such great re reasons to read. Um, with no further ado, I guess, I guess I'll tell you about some of these amazing books that I've like surrounded myself with. And I hope you'll forgive me by showing, um, I put mine on the top of this tag because I feel like I should just tell you about them. I feel a little embarrassed, but no, I'm please don't. I, this is a great time for me to just interject and say that towards the end, we are giving away six of Sally's books. We have five copies and I'll, and I'll go ding, ding, ding um, <laughs> when we get to it. But I just wanted to say, sure, please show us your books. Oh, that is so nice. Thank you. All right. This is a, a picture book that's called Benji, The Bad Day in Me. Um, and it's about two brothers. This is Benji and his older brother, Sammy, that's narrating the book. And um, it's just a sibling rivalry story about one autistic sibling and one not autistic sibling and how they both have to contend with things and how family love pretty much saves the day in the end. Um, and a lot of my, actually all of my books are inspired by, here, I want to show you this really quickly. Here is a, a picture of me and my three my three little monsters. <laughs> so my three sons, who are now all in their 20s, really inspired um, all of my stories. And one of my son is, sons is autistic. All three of them are neurodivergent. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, here's another book that I've written. It's a novel called Stanley Will Probably Be Fine, and it is set here in San Diego. Um, it is about a boy who's starting a big, scary middle school, and he's so he has sensory issues. He has sensory processing issues, and he's also super anxious. And in this big, scary middle school, he's lost all of his friends. And he figures, though, if he can enter this comics trivia treasure hunt all around downtown San Diego looking for clues and answering the clues because he's so good at comics trivia, then um, maybe his friends are going to think he's cool again and they're going to like him. So he, he does that. And it's about facing your fears, pretty much. My other book. Um, which won the Dolly Gray Award, which I was really, really so honored for, is called um, The Someday Birds. And it's a story of 12-year-old Charlie, who is autistic and has kind of annoying siblings. And the, <laughs> all of them are faced with a very big journey that Charlie does not want to have to take. It's a journey across the country in a broken down camper to go see his father, who has been injured in the war in Afghanistan and is in a hospital in treatment. Um, so he and his siblings have to go across the country. He loves birds so much, and it was his point of connection with his dad. They, were, they had made up a list of birds to see in the wild someday. So Charlie spends that trip going across country trying to find those birds on his own so that he could show his dad the list when he gets there and it'd be, be like a gift to give him. So all right, here are some other middle grade books. Those two are middle grade books and we'll keep on with the middle grade books, I think, because there are so many wonderful ones. And middle grade, uh, they, middle grade is such a weird term. I mean, it can be anywhere from third grade really up. Um, but all of these books, mine and every one that I'm going to show you, adults read them and love them as well. More and more adults are even reading middle grade books because basically they're G-rated books. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. 
Um, this one is called The Truth as Told by Mason Buttle, and it's by Leslie Connor. And you'll have all the names of these books later, so don't worry too much about it. But Leslie Connor is a wonderful writer. Everything she writes makes me think of emotional nourishment. She nourishes you with just like the kindness of people in the books. And all of her books have characters that whose brains operate differently, um, whether they're labeled or not. And it, they're just beautiful books. This one is about a boy named Mason. He clearly has learning, uh, he's cl clearly learning disabled and has things going on and he's made fun of at school. And he's, he's very large and he doesn't have a, he, he's just a wonderful, loving, good-natured kid that has kind of gotten a raw deal, but it's sort of about how he comes out okay in the end. I really recommend it. This is a middle grade book by Belle McNichol, who is a British author, Scottish actually, I think she is, and it's called A Kind of Spark. It made a really big splash um, in uh, the UK and over here it's starting to grow in popularity. And it's about an autistic girl who has an autistic older sister. They're both very proud to be autistic. And um, the younger girl, Addie, is uh, outraged when she finds out the history of her town includes the hanging of witches back in the like, you know, 1500s or whatever. And, and she learns that most of them were people that whose brains worked a little bit differently, who were kind of odd people that the most of the townspeople did not, they were suspicious of or didn't entirely like. And so they were murdered. And that outrages her so much that she decides to, to, to petition the town to do something about that. She takes some action. But basically it's about how comfortable she gets as, as an advocate for her own self, her own autistic self. Um, let's see what else. This is a book, The Goldfish Boy, that's a mystery about a boy who has OCD and um, agoraphobia. He stays in his room. He doesn't like to ever leave his room. He just stays there in the window looking out. And as he's looking out the window, he sees um, the neighbor next door, the little boy disappears. And he thinks he's seen a clue, but he doesn't know what to do as everybody searches frantically for the missing little boy. Um, and he has to overcome his fears and, you know, in order to, to, to do the right thing. Um, so it's really well done. It's a very suspenseful mystery. The Goldfish Boy by Lisa Thompson. Um, and this is a book about ADHD in a girl. Um, she is Gwendolyn Rogers, and she's a fifth grader, I believe. I loved this book because it's so full of her energy and just wildness and her train of thought. And the author, Kayla Carter, also has ADHD. Um, and it's about, basically this book is about Gwendolyn Rogers, who um, trying to figure out what the heck is wrong with her because she can't get a diagnosis and she would really love to have a diagnosis and know what the heck is going on because school is difficult, friendships are difficult. Um, it's a really great book if you know a girl with ADHD or that's struggling with that or a boy, doesn't matter at all. Um, really cool writing style. Ooh, the sun is coming in my window really strong. I'm gonna just lower my blind. <laughs> I hope that's okay. Um, here is a great book that is about, it's by Cece Bell. It's called El Defo. Maybe you know this one. Uh, Cece, who is deaf, um, back in the, I think she grew up in the 80s or the 70s, and she, she, they didn't have fancy high-tech hearing aids. She had to wear this big glumpy thing across her chest that would help her hear, and it was embarrassing to her, And it, but it also led her to have sort of like a superpower. Anyhow, she wrote the really just this most endearing graphic novel about her experiences being the deaf kid in class and going from being mortified to finding ways of belonging. Um, and making her way. What else can I show you? Um, maybe some picture books. Benji, oh, I showed you Benji. Yeah. <laughs> when Sophie gets angry, really, really angry. It's an old one, but it's such a classic and it's so good. And it's about emotional literacy, um, about when you have a meltdown or you just get, you just, you know, when kids just get so angry, they don't know what to do. 
And the illustrations, the art is just so beautiful, portraying that, you know, that, look at that tree, just so gorgeous. Um, so it basically gives kids a tool about what to do when they're angry, what they could do. And just the knowledge that when you have that meltdown and you get so angry, you will get over it, it will pass, you know, and just remembering that can be half the battle sometimes. Here's another one about anger, Ravi's Roar by Tom Percival, who's a British author. And it's pretty much about the same thing, but it's really wonderfully done. And it's, it's part of a new series by Tom Percival. He has lots of books about feelings. So he's a name to look for. My dear friend, Samantha Cotterell is an autistic artist and author now because she has created her very own series of books. There's three or four of them called the Little Senses Books. This is, and they're all about sensory issues and autism. This is one called Nope, Never, Not For Me, about a kid that will not eat his broccoli, his food. <laughs> we, we all have that uh, kind of issue in our lives, right? Um, I mean, my son went for about five years only eating chicken nuggets. And when I wrote The Someday Birds, the original title for it was Chicken Nuggets Across America, <laughs> because that was what the road trips were like um, when my kids were little and we used to travel. Anyway, yeah. So that's a food, a food book, food sensitivity book. Here is another emotional one. Um, for dealing with feelings of sadness or depression when sadness is at your door. The illustrations are so soft and lovely. It's by Eva Elland, or maybe it's Eland, I don't know. But it, they're just so soft and beautifully done. And it's so honest and it would just prompt such a lovely conversation about the validity of all your feelings and valuing your feelings. And I think for kids sometimes half the battle is you know, not to, as parents, we like to run in and fix all of their feelings or fix the whole situation, but being able to just sit as this book kind of teaches us to do and acknowledge and just value your feeling, you're feeling sad and that's really a bummer. Let's sit with that for a moment together, you know, and not try to solve it, you know, just value, just, you know, give, give it the respect and let, let your child just feel their feelings with respect can go kind of far. I wish I had learned that when my kids were a lot younger, but <laughs> it's something I think I've learned in my old age. Here is another ADHD book. Wiggle, Stomps, and Squeezes Calm My Jitters Down. It's really, really a fun, really good book by Lindsay Rowe Parker with wonderful illustrations by Rebecca Burgess, who's autistic. Here's one by Jen Malia, another autistic author. It's about sensory issues called Too Sticky. It's great when you can help support autistic authors too. I love to be able to support them and show their books. Here's another by an autistic author. She's in her twenties and she's the most lovely girl and she lives in the LA area, Alec Alexandra Adlawan, and she publishes these herself. She's so sweet. I've met her. So here is her book. She has a whole bunch by Maddie and Albert. And um, yeah, she's just great. She has a service dog called Duke that is the cutest dog you've ever seen. And I'm waiting for her to write a book about her service dog, Duke. <laughs> Sally, we have a yes. question um, in the chat and I'm just kind of interjecting. These books all sound amazing. Are they on Amazon or are we able to order them via a Novel Mind website or do you have other recommendations if there's like a You, you can find them anywhere. You can find okay. these books anywhere. Amazon, you can all, we'll have a list for you. I know Maria said she's yep. going to ha put together, I, I gave her like a list of all the books, you will yep. find them. And then all you have to do is just enter that title in and you can find them Amazon, Barnes and Noble, independent bookstores, if you want to support your independence. However you would like to do it, you'll be able to find all of these books. They're all in print and they're all avail available now. They're all new books of the last five years. Awesome. So thank you. Yep. And here's one called A Friend for Henry. Henry is a little autistic boy that doesn't know how to make friends too well, but he learns. <laughs> and the illustrations are so cute. Look at that back one. Okay, here is the last one. And then maybe we can have some questions or whatever. Oops. 
I love this book so much. It's called Truman. And it isn't like specifically about a neurodivergent kid. It's about a, a, a turtle who has really bad anxiety because his little girl goes off to school and he's left all alone at home. But it is just the sweetest, most adorable story. And it's just handled in such a lovely way. Look at this page. See, be brave, she said. And then she left. She left poor Truman all alone in his terrarium. Where did she go? So I, they're just, ugh, I just, and I believe that picture books are for everyone too. Picture books are works of art. I think they're wasted if you just think that you can only be four and then you outgrow them or something. Oh my gosh, to read them is just so much fun. So, um, and yeah, any age kid can, can read a picture book. So yeah, so that's what I got. <laughs> there, awesome. there are more too, but yeah we love it's i could i could listen for hours to someone describing books that's just it's my happy place um i had a question um and then maybe we can open it up to if anyone else wants to ask a question um but my question is what are you reading that have you do you have any recommendations because i i really do try to when i'm looking for books um you know, I'm looking for those same kind of positive representations. And I, I totally <laughs> appreciate what you said that, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, there was kind of this, it was almost tropes. Um, yeah. Like we're going to have the person with a disability and we're either going to be inspired or we're going to have pity. Those were pretty much the two options. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just wondering if you have any recommendations maybe for the parents in the audience um, when we put our kids to bed, what we could be reading too. Um, yeah, well, I, I think any of those books, you could read any of those books. Um, in terms of the tropes, exactly. I think that's exactly the word. And I've actually come up with a list of some of the tropes. Um, you know, that there's some really that. horrible ones. <laughs> but um, to talk about bad representation, it's and there's a lot of it out there. It's like if you have no, you know, the author has no direct knowledge and you have a sense that there's only like a tourist like engagement or, or representation of the character. Um, it's yeah. Or if it's, it's written, this is the main difference, I think, to look for as you're looking for books for your child who is disabled or who has a neurodivergence. Is the book written to help typical kids understand that? Or is the book actually written for a child who is disabled or has a neurodivergence, you know? Is it about them or is it for them? I guess to break it down, that's the phrase to look for in the book. Is this book about them or is it just, or is it for them? It shouldn't be just about them for other people to help other people learn. It should be for them to help them see themselves in a positive, energetic, good way, you know? And, and not to put a gloss on anything, you know, not that it has to be a cheery book, you know, it, it can talk about the challenges, you know, and, and show a story arc of improving. But, you know, I think that is just the difference. Um, it's a difference of point of view, you know, and I have to say, and I have, I pulled this book out too, you know, I love the book Wonder, I, you know, I thought it was a great read. But this is a book that is about a child with a disability. It is not for a child with a disability. It's to teach all the other kids in the classroom to be more kind. But this is not a book, you know, that empowers Augie that much. I mean, it does a little, but, you know, there's something about this book that always bothered me, and that's what it is, you know? It's not featuring him out in the world, having his adventure, being challenged, you know, going on. It's about making everybody else feel more comfortable about him. And there's something about that that I, I you know, it's a fine distinction. I don't know if I'm putting my finger on it right, but, um, you know, that that's just the thing. And, you know, I, our kids just deserve to see themselves as the heroes in the story. There is absolutely no reason. Uh, can you think of a better hero in the story? So, uh, you know, I just think that we need more of that. Um, another thing to look for is if, um, if the author hasn't really seemed to do their homework, you know, or if the representation, if you skim it in advance, it just feels like they're doing a laundry list of symptoms they could have gotten out of a textbook. That has happened. 
Um, there was a, you know, a book that was, uh, it won awards for its autism representation about 15 years ago. And they, I read an interview with the author because I did not like this book. <laughs> I won't name it because I'll be too, I'll be polite. But uh, in the interview, the author said that she was asked about what research she did. And she said she spent half a day in an autistic uh, preschool, half a day. And it won all kinds of awards and everybody's like, oh, this is so great representation. It wasn't. I think we need to do better for kids. And I'm just so glad that I was able to um, share some books that I think do. Um, I was I was going to say, Sally, I read The Someday Birds years ago, several years ago, well before I knew that we had a mutual friend. Um, and I remember reading it as the parent of several on the spectrum. And I was like, oh, this person totally like it. It just felt like the the character um, that was portrayed as autistic could like it was three dimensional and it wasn't like a ticking off of every single DSM, you know, descriptive. Yeah. It was parts and it was it, it just I really did appreciate that. And, then, you know, the rest is history, as they say about us meeting. But that's that is. Um, and I don't think I could find better words than about versus for. Um, we do have questions in the chat, though. Um, and that is um, one question is, what do you recommend reading to a second grade class to help them understand where an autistic peer is coming from or experiencing and to be more accepting and kind? I have yet to find an appropriate book that isn't stereotypical or rigid seeming. A Boy Named Bat by Alana K. Arnold. A boy. Totally perfect for second grade because it's it's younger. It's in between like a picture book and a thicker middle grade book. So, and there's a few of them in the series. A Boy Named Bat, B-A-T. Um, and it's about a little autistic, it's about an autistic boy. And I think he is probably around second grade. And his mom's a veterinarian and his parents are friendly divorced. So he goes between his mom and his dad, um, which he doesn't like because he doesn't like change. But his life kind of changes when his mom finds a baby skunk and he and lets him help take care of the baby skunk. And um, it's just a really sweet story. And it's a great, I think that might be a really great one. And then there's a follow-up question. Um, do you have a book to help an elementary age autistic girl understand herself a little better? Elementary age, meaning like fourth to sixth? Or I would so, say or? closer to second, third. Second, third. That's kind of tricky. You know, I, I don't think there are. To be honest, I am writing one right now. I am writing a book about an autistic fourth grade girl, and it's called Invisible Isabel. Oh. <laughs> and she's very shy and timid. And I, I'm writing it to fill a gap because I don't see that there, there are enough books about girls, and especially at, at the lower age level. So, yeah. When's the publishing date? <laughs> I'll think about it. Uh, yeah, I don't probably 2024 actually. So but um I'll think about that and if I find I'll think if I can find a good one, I'll let you know. Yeah. We are taking questions and I was gonna ask you also, I know you had mentioned you kind of had the the whole spectrum of, you know, from picture books to mid-grade books. Do you have any recommendations for young adults? Um, yeah, I do. I don't have as many on my shelf, unfortunately. That's okay. Um, but young adult, I would say some really great ones are, um, um, yeah, here's one that is probably young, young adult. It's about a first kiss and a first boyfriend kind of experience. It's The State of Grace by Rachel Lucas. Um, so something like that. I have some here. Let's see. Oh, I know. Books by Susan Nielsen. Um, it's S-U-S-I-N. Is her first name and Nielsen, N-I-E-L. S E N. She's a Canadian author and she writes some really great young adult books with very quirky characters. Um, okay, I have one of hers right here. It's called We Are All Made of Molecules. Yes, and it's about like a crazy high school party gone wrong and two step siblings, one of which is on the spectrum and one of which is kind of like this ditzy girl that's written with the most amazing voice. All of her books are incredible. I just love this author so much. So 
yeah, I would say try her for some young adult that um, has, this character is definitely on the spectrum. There's some others where it's just sort of implied, you know, they're, they beat, they march to different drums. And uh, yeah, I'll keep thinking about that. There's one, if we're good with LGBTQ um, representation in um, high we school. are. And mm -hmm. this is, I love this book so much, Queens of Geek by Jen Wilde, who's an autistic Australian author. And it is about these girls that decide to go to a group of friends. They go to Comic-Con in San Diego and they have a wild, crazy weekend and they learn a lot about love and themselves. And, you know, they geek out about really cool stuff. And it's really a fun book, definitely older, but really fun book. Sally, um, can you hold up the book that you wrote with the bird in the title? I believe it's called The Someday Birds. Yes. If someone is asking to see that title again. Oh, thank you. Here it is, The Someday Birds. And what award did it win? I was. It, it won the Dolly Gray Award, which is a national award for representation of disability in a work of children's literature. Congratulations. Yeah. So you be able to see that. Yep. It came out in 2017. And um, I still talk about it almost every day with kids that write or, um, you know, classrooms that want to talk. So that makes me really happy. You know, a nice thing about children's lit too or writing for children is your book doesn't fade away. New kids are discovering it every year as they come up through the grades, you know, and, and discover it through their classroom libraries or whatever. And so it's super fun. I, I've just been able to connect with so many really, really neat kids and teachers and it's been a great experience. So, yeah. And and for your, I have a, I have like a writer kind of question, um, if it's okay. How do you, how did you decide who you wanted to collaborate for um, your illustrated book? Oh, that uh, my illustrated yeah. book, my picture book, um, was done through Lee and Lowe Publishers, and I had an editor there, and uh, Jessica Echeverria, and she matched us as editors will do at publishing houses when they do picture books. They, she took my text, decided on a, an illustrator she thought would be a good match, which was Ken Min, the most lovely guy. I got to meet him, which is fun. Um, and then he create, she basically held the reins of my words and his pictures and, and coordinated the two. So you typically, as an author, don't have control of who they're going to choose as an illustrator. I was really lucky that it was so collaborative. Our experience was really fun. I did not know that. Um, someone did want to say birds are um, a friend of her. A friend of hers has a son, and birds are her son's passion. So she can't wait to share the Sunday birds. Oh, that's so wonderful. Oh, and, and I, another thing that I should have mentioned too is a lot of those books, and definitely mine. Like if you go to my website sallyjpla.com, and then you go to the Sunday birds page. There's all kinds of reading guides and like different activities and, and things, um, you know, about birds and about um, reading. A lot of these books do have reading guides online if you go to their author's websites that can help you enter into the book or have a discussion about it. Um, it that's helpful to teachers, classrooms, or just families. So, yeah, I think on mine, I have a map too, so that you can map, you know, a trip across country or this bird reference. There's all kinds of, I, I got really into birding writing it, so that was fun. <laughs> um, there's a question, and I do want to invite people, you can come on camera, you can stay off camera, you can unmute yourself and ask, you can raise your hand, you can send a message, however you want to do it. Um, there is a question in chat, what would you recommend for a parent to read that would help the parent to understand and support they are autistic kiddo the best. Um, parents are always looking for recommendations that are accurate. Yeah, um, I can say two things. First of all, the website, um, autselfadvocacy.org. It's um, the Autistic Self Advocacy Network. And their tag phrase is, nothing about us without us. And they're just a, such a wonderful, respectful organization, and they have pages and pages of information for, new, for parents, for kids, for newly diagnosed. They're just a wonderful resource, and they're also very active in advocacy. 
Um, there's one book that I thought was really pretty good if you have a girl. Um, I read it as an adult because I was diagnosed as an adult. I found it and it was pretty helpful. I know there's a few more out there maybe that might be better, but you, you could check it out. This one's called Asper Girls by Rudy Simone. Um, and there's essays in there by autistic women about what it's like to be grow, to grow up autistic. Um, I, I was like, check, yep, oh yeah. When I read, read through that, it was like looking at a checklist of my own struggling childhood and adolescence. It explained a lot. <laughs> so there are resources out there for sure. Got to unmute myself. So question from the audience. There, there may or may not, I will not out the person as a librarian, but <laughs> are there any titles that you might um, recommend that people consider like weeding out of their library? Ones that would be in the like doing more othering than advocacy and support. Um, <laughs> and how you would like to handle that, you could just do maybe, <laughs> I'm trying to think if you want to sign the name or how you'd like to do that. I know, I, I hate to diss people's books, but I would take a very careful look at anything that was published before, say, 2012, 2013, 2014, anything like earlier than that, I would take a really careful look at. And also check and see if there's a review on a site called disabilityinkidlit.com. It's um, on hiatus for the past like five years. They haven't put new information out for a while, but disabilityinkidlit.com, while it was running, and it's all still archived and available online, um, archived reviews, book reviews, written by people with the actual disability represented in the book that there that is being reviewed. So it would be someone with Tourette's would review the book, you know, with the Tourette's representation or whatever it was. And boy, is that insightful and really interesting to read those reviews. So if you have an older book or if you have any question, you know, if, about something, and I, I would question everything pre maybe in 2014, 2015, um, take a look and see, maybe you'll find the review there, or even just, you know, you can Google it and say problematic representation and the book title, and you'll see what might somebody I'll bet will have written about it. And there'll be interesting things to say, which will might make you think, wow, you know, didn't never thought of it that way before, but yeah. So, so the person says thanks. Uh, she does a ton of reading, but she cannot possibly read everything herself. So that yeah. that's a great. It sounds like a great resource. Um, another question. We have we have a lot of questions in the in the chat. Interesting. I just went to Kid and Lit okay. and looked up a book that I read back in two thousand four. That back then I thought was okay, and it does not represent people with autism very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, things have moved on and they've moved on in a good way. And, you know, that's why I'm so passionate about doing this, because I think, you know, of course, librarians don't have time to read every book. It's like an onslaught about what's going on in, in school libraries and all. But if there, there are ways that we can help you get better representation, there's been a wave of so much better representation, so much more honest um, representation. So if we can help you that way and families, you know, then, yeah, that's good. And then, so the, taking a novel mind.com with the disability and kid lit together, you kind of get yeah. a full picture. Exactly. Um, there is a question. Is, do you know of a nonprofit organization that is getting or gifting these kinds of positive representational books that are getting them to local schools or into libraries? Or is that a gap? There's, um, there's one organization that is doing a bit of that called We Need Diverse Books.com. You might have heard of it. They're really big. They're way bigger than just um, disability or neurodiversity. They deal with all kinds of diversity, every kind of diversity. Um, so, you know, they, they support Black, Indigenous, people of color. They support um, just all kinds. They're wonderful. And um, you might want to check them because they do have grants and they do award internships and things like that. Maybe there's something there. And Sally, we are just so appreciative of your time today. I'm. This is such a fun topic and it's such a um, thought provoking one. And it's certainly close to my heart as a reader and as a mom. So I'm just, thank you so much for being oh. available for us. 
It was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to Mario for being available for translation. Thank you for Joe for doing all of the things that make this happen. And thank you to everybody who came out. And most again, most of all, Sally, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks. Good night. Thank you.